Okay, so what I'm planning on uh, teaching in October is uh, opening applications for Pinon Godan, and uh, I want to gear at least the first part of it very much towards uh, people that have only done like Shinbudo Karate, you know, uh, modern karate where, you know, uh, not so much with the use of both hands and tree and stuff like that. So um, I figured the best way to get in to get into that is to introduce it with movements which are very similar to what they're already practicing. So, um, Shinbudo Karataka will all be familiar. Can you take one big step back? With uh, techniques where you do, uh, go ahead and punch. Where you're going like this, and then, you know, like that. And uh, what I want to do is just teach a, a very minor variation of that with uh, Uchi Uke and go back to Again. Okay. Now, when he punched from long range, this part of the movement didn't do anything because he was too far away. Um, so this went by harmlessly, not doing anything. But if we just adjust the range a little bit, not only does this become natural and uh, automatic, it is also necessary because at this range, there's just no way for me to be able to get this hand in this motion up in time. So go ahead. So we're just go, we're just going to do the uh, set position as a uh, as a parry and then pass it to the other hand, and this should be very natural feeling to them. I'm hoping, thinking, anyways. Um, then I'm still going to be doing the same uh, reverse punch, but this time just with the addition of uh, you know uh, contact with the, the wrist, the adhesion and uh, crabbing. So go ahead. Over 
far enough in the initial movement and then come back and you try to meet the technique as early on as you can um, and I think that's the key. It's because uh, if he does this hand first, go ahead and touch the other hand, um, it's very easy to get the hand over to it because it's coming at this kind of an angle. But if it's coming at this kind of a sharp angle from this side to center, um, you need to, it's, it's, it's a little bit, uh, I don't know what, what the word is, <laughs> but it's, it's harder to do. And the way you want to do that is, go ahead and touch this first. Make sure you get the hand over right away the second hand, go ahead, and then try to meet it early. And again, this doesn't work, but if he blocks, then I can do that. So that's the first four techniques. Um, okay, and then let's see, uh, that hand. Okay, and uh, something I forgot to record uh, last time was uh, then taking this and what I'm, what I'm doing here is exploring the, the parry pass mostly. The, the punches, the parry, and then just do it. Um, the parry and then pass it to the other hand, um, which is extremely common in Okinawan martial arts and martial arts in general. Um, so this parry pass is what I'm exploring. And on a basic level, you can just use it against one attack, but uh, the next level would be to use it against two. Um, a level after that would be to think of how to use it in uh, a different scenario where instead of me pairing, he's pairing. So if I put, let's uh, do, yeah, the leaf like that. Okay, so now we're gonna do a, uh, do the technique off a right lead block. So I'm gonna deliberately do kind of a back this more than a punch, because he can, but he, if I punch, he can block either way. But if I do a back fist, there's only one direction you can you can. So, so the lead hand is going to be the block hand. I want to just do like a back fist to it. And then anytime my strike is parried towards the opposite arm, I can do uh, a parry pass. And it'll work just like a parry pass from a punch. So, sorry. <laughs> so I strike, and then he, he's pushing my arm over, so I just let it fold in. And I'm in the exact same reference point I was earlier when I was doing it against a punch. So, so you just guard up. I lead his hand to the outside and then go. If he switches, so again, I'm only giving him one option. He can't block this way because I'm coming, you know, in a little bit at this way. So he has only got the one option. Now, if he blocks that one, again, we can go into tweet. So now we're doing a left hand lead uh, block. So punch and then pass. So he's parrying and then I'm passing. And then he blocks and I go to uh, The level after that would be to do the rear hand block. So uh, if you just start from here and uh, just do a right hand punch. Now block that one. So now he's blocking with the rear hand. So, and again, I'm going to be doing a type of technique that forces him to push this direction. Um, I'm going to be coming a little bit at an angle like this, forward and to the side, so that uh, I'm provoking a specific response um, here. Now, this is the same uh, reference point I had earlier. I punch, and if he's quick enough, he might get this hand up to block. So. Straight, if it's bent, 
this will get it straight. Um, the punch itself will get it straight. Um, just because the, the natural reaction is to want to reduce the amount of force. So if I'm pulling on this and pushing on a sensitive part of his body, his, his arm will naturally straighten to, to lessen the force. Um, <coughs> so let's do a couple more times. So this is the rear hand version. And again, go ahead. This is pushing to the side, so this is the same as a parry pass. And uh, for the more experienced karateka, people that have done old style karate, um, that's going to probably be one of the take home lessons, both the double punches. And the idea of uh, using the parry pass from a block. So they've blocked my attack, and I still do my, my parry pass. And any technique you, can, you, you do from a parry pass, you can do from that scenario. It's going to put you in the same reference point. So I think that's going to be some of the take home for people that are a little more experienced. Um, punch this thing in. So this is my parry pass, strike, and into tweaking. So, uh, anyways, I'm hoping that's something that they'll get out of it. Uh, after that, I was planning on uh, just going uh, from kake or from kakidi and just having him play with trying to provoke a reaction and then exploiting that reaction with the, with the techniques that were just taught. So if I'm doing kakidi, I'm going to punch at him and he's of course going to block. And I'm going to exploit that reaction doing the parry pass and into it. Um, and then if I, the other option is to make his rear hand block by first seizing the first hand. So I'm from here, go here, boom, parry pass, and then into the block. So provoke the reaction, pass it, strike, and lock. I'm punching at him, and he, I'm forcing him to react to the pass like that. And then again, I'm going to punch at him, and, and he's going to use your foot like block. So just going back and forth like that. So I punch and pass, 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 punch and pass. Punch and, pass. and that's just getting used to using uh, this parry pass motion against a block. And of course, you can easily add okay, some. No, that's fine. It's a natural reaction. That's good. It's a good thing to practice against too. But anyways, just for simplicity, doing it this way. And uh, it actually almost has like a cocky feel to it. And it's, uh, I think, uh, just a good drill to start to think about carry pass as a defense uh, against his defense, a counter against his counter. So I'm punching. He's countering it, and then I'm countering that. So like that. So I'm going here, block, that goes, and then These are uh, three continuous motion drills. You can just kind of loop in a 
the side for as long as you'd like to to get used to those kinds of motions.